Video games have always struggled to be seen as an art form in the eyes of the mainstream media. Like any new medium, they borrow their fair share of artistic elements from the art forms that preceded them, whether that's taking inspiration from the novels of Tolkien and Lovecraft, or the storytelling styles of Steven Spielberg, and unfortunately, in some cases, Michael Bay. As graphics engines and console hardware improved, games began to borrow more and more from their Hollywood counterparts, with huge sections of stories told via cutscenes and cinematics. While in some cases this can totally ruin the immersive flow of a game, some developers have perfected the art of taking the types of stories we see on film and expanding them to tell their in-game narrative. And among those, Mass Effect 2 stands out as one of the very best. What makes Mass Effect 2 stand out among its gaming counterparts is rooted in the DNA of the cinematic experiences it's based on. Its sprawling political world and deep, layered characters have a lot in common with the Star Trek TV series. While its intense action, force-like abilities, and overarching plot is very reminiscent of the Star Wars films. With that at its core, Mass Effect 2's story takes shape almost as what could be described as a TV series within a film. And that is what separates it from the rest of the pack. Games like Uncharted and Gears of War create a linear film-like story. They usually have a smaller cast of four or five characters who move from plot beat to plot beat in pursuit of one overall goal. Their propulsive, action film-like narratives usually leave very little room for subplots or expansive casts. On the other side of the spectrum is The Witcher 3. Here there are dozens of side characters living in a world so large it takes hours just to walk from one end to another. In this case, the narrative plays out almost like you're watching a TV show. All four major sections of the game feel like multi-episode seasons where Geralt, the main character, usually faces off against a villain of the week while on the way to finally overcoming the series' big bad. Mass Effect 2 bridged the gap between these two styles, and in doing so crafted a story that both propelled us forward as we played it and gave us a time to fall in love with its characters. The film-like plot of Mass Effect 2 focuses around the increasing threat of the Collectors as they scour the galaxy, killing and kidnapping whole colonies of humans. And their threat is felt from the very beginning as they methodically tear apart your ship and kill not only your crew, but you as well. Talk about a way to kick things off. Using some creepy science, you're resurrected, and from that moment forward, the game makes sure to keep the threat of the collectors front and center. You see, a big problem with many games in the role-playing genre is the lack of presence by their villains. The typical and very often repeated trope is that you start somewhere peaceful, then the villain destroys it, usually killing someone you love in the process, but then you spend the rest of the game doing other things like leveling up and getting new gear until your final confrontation at the very end of the story. At best, these villains might taunt you through dialogue or by sending some of their minions to harass you, but as these games often run upwards of 50 hours or more, it's highly likely you spent most of the game having totally forgotten that they even exist as you 
hunt monsters, wander through dungeons looking for loot, or check out the latest hot wedding fashion. Who came up with this? This is surreal. <laughs> After we tie up all the loose ends, let's think about the ceremony. Mass Effect 2 gives you that freedom to explore, but at several key intervals throughout its running time, you come back into direct conflict with the collectors. And because they easily annihilated you in the opening scene, every time you encounter them is fraught with the threat that they might do the same again. This all culminates as you enter the final act of the game, and while you're out on a mission, they board your ship and abduct your crew. The harrowing experience puts you in the shoes of your crippled pilot, who can only hide from the enemy or move at a snail's pace to avoid them. By the time you return to the ship, the collectors have taken most everyone on board. You're alone. The game's narrative refuses to let you forget about the collectors in the same way that any good film villain never allows the protagonists any time to rest. Just when they think they're on the front foot, well... The Joker had planned to be caught. He wanted me to lock him up in the MCU. The fact that Mass Effect 2 manages this, despite its genre, the options it gives its players, and its runtime, is something to be truly commended. Anyway, you're told the Collector's base is at the other end of the Omega-4 relay. No one who's traveled through it has ever returned, and it's there that your final confrontation is going to take place. It's a suicide mission, and to accomplish it, you'll need a crew crazy enough to fight alongside you. It's with its characters that Mass Effect 2 embraces the storytelling aspects of a TV show. By the end of the game, you'll have spent significant chunks of time with almost a dozen citizens of the galaxy. From badass alien BFFs like Garrus... Everyone was always ignoring you and hitting on me. Time for you to get a fair shot at it. ...to singing scientists like Morden... I am the very model of a scientist Salarian. I've studied species Turian, Asari, and Batarian. I'm quite good at genetics as a subset of biology because I am an expert which I know is a tautology. My xenoscience studies range from urban to agrarian. I am the very model of a scientist solarian. to expert hackers like Kasumi. We should probably wrap this up. You look pretty silly standing there talking to an advertisement. The way the game handles these characters is to give you a mission, or an episode, where you'll meet the character and find out what they're all about. But the thing is, these guys aren't two-dimensional gimmicks. They're all damaged and broken people in some way, and this is covered when you choose to go on their second character-centric episode. It's there you get to find out about the ghosts of their past, and in some cases you get to resolve those. In others, not so much. You also get the chance to debrief with them afterwards, to gain further insight into their points of view, as well as how they view your character and the others on your crew. This layer of depth and focus on character is something we tend not to see in cinematic games that are inspired directly by blockbuster films. I love the Uncharted series, but over the course of its first three games, its character arcs are always identical. Sully remains Nathan's loyal, witty best friend, and Elena is always angry with Nate at the start, but once the adventure ends, they're in love, and isn't it mushy and beautiful? By giving its characters what are effectively multi-episode arcs as seen on TV, Mass Effect 2 allows players to build deep connections with a cast of complex and unique characters. But if not done properly, this combination of storytelling styles could have been a total mess. 
What was it that brought the episodic character missions and tight overarching narrative all together? The answer is you, or more specifically, your choices. See, the actions you take both in the main plot and in the character-specific missions will deeply affect both areas of the game. Do you invest in upgrading components of your ship to face the collectors? Do you take time to go through your character's full arcs? Are you willing to compromise your values to ensure they're loyal to you? We already saw what would happen if you don't. Though this loyalty metric can seem very binary when viewed from afar, the fact is that if a member of your crew feels strongly enough that you're not a fit leader, that's going to be reflected both in their character arc and in the plot's ultimate conclusion. As an example, when you first meet Jack, she's a damaged, ruthless personification of rage. She was experimented on and tortured for years, and as a result she hates and distrusts almost everyone. But based on your choices, she can be brought back from this brink and learn to trust others again. Or you can mess it up or even intentionally betray her and she stays angry and selfish and she dies in a final battle she just wasn't ready for. The consequences of your choices in both narrative paths of the game are felt from beginning to end. And as a second chapter in a trilogy, Mass Effect 2 also adds a few tantalizing cliffhangers to be resolved in the next one. What if you'd chosen to destroy a base full of enemy Geth instead of reprogramming them? Or what if you'd succeeded in defending Tally at her trial of exile? These threads are left dangling, but in the best way possible. There's something to theorize about once the game's story has concluded. And what a conclusion it was. Approaching Omega-4 Relay. Everyone stand by. Let's make it happen. Reaper IFF activated. Signal acknowledged. Commander, drive core just lit up like a Christmas tree. Drive core electrical charge at critical levels. Rerouting! Brace for deceleration. Oh, shit! Too close. It's the ultimate game ending. Nothing I've played has yet come close to this pulse-pounding, high-stakes conclusion to a video game story. Every decision you've made prior to the finale, and every decision you make during it, affect the outcome, sometimes with heart-wrenching results. But the pride you feel as you push through the collector base bit by bit, with your brothers and sisters in arms as yet unscathed, is unlike anything else. Every brief respite gives you a chance to hyperventilate for a few seconds, say, thank god no one died, and then you have to keep going. Keep fighting. The stories combine in a beautiful tango of writing, game design, and mission planning, all while Jack Wall's excellent score is a perfect bombastic complement to the unfolding action. And if you do succeed, you escape from the exploding collector base just in time.
the game shows you your surviving, loyal characters, the result of your actions, and then lets you know that the war has only just begun. The final battle is coming. Let's hope you made the right choices. Mass Effect 2 isn't a perfect game. I don't think any game ever really can be. But where Mass Effect 2 surpasses all its peers, including within its own series, is how it perfectly blends episodic TV-style storytelling with a tight, overarching narrative that's very akin to something you'd see on film. In doing so, Mass Effect 2's characters and plot become inextricably connected in a way that few games ever accomplish. It wouldn't be possible to have one without the other, and the layers of choices upon choices create a story that's not only extremely engaging, but feels deeply personal for every individual person who plays the game. While there aren't infinite permutations, the fact that Mass Effect 2 offers so many choices and doesn't buckle under the weight of them is astounding. They're not just a part of a great interconnected story, but the reason it connects so well. We all remember the hard decisions we made as Commander Shepard. We remember the friendships we built. We remember the enemies we vanquished. Mass Effect 2 had it all. It told a story where all of its elements just clicked, and in doing so, it didn't just tell a story anymore. It allowed players to experience it, to truly live it. The divide between Shepard and the player became so thin, it's no wonder opinions about the series' finale were so strong. But however the rest of the Mass Effect series is remembered, Mass Effect 2 stands as a high point, not just as a video game story, but in storytelling across every medium. Long may it be remembered. Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Have you got a minute? 